Chapter 2 Longitudes and Latitudes For a very long time, people believed that the earth was flat. However, scholars like Plato, Pythagoras and many others believed that the earth was spherical in shape. According to their observations, the earth was not flat as the moment of the sun varied and it was possible to see greater distances when sailors climbed on the mast or people climbed higher altitudes. In the 16th century, a Portuguese explorer, Ferdinand Magellan, set on an expedition. He started his journey from Seville in Spain in 1519. Though he died on the way, the voyage was completed by his second in command. Juan Sebastian Elcono in 1522, when the letter reached Seville and proved by his circumnavigation that the earth was spherical in shape. Subsequently, with the advent of modern science, it was proved that the earth is shaped like an orange. It means the shape of the earth is a sphere but slightly flattened at the top and the bottom. Locating position on the earth. We know that the earth is continuously rotating on its axis as well as simultaneously orbiting the sun. Then, how do we mark all the stationary or moving things on the surface of the earth? When we have to go somewhere, we take the help of a map. But the earth is too big. So how can we draw a map on it? This was a question which puzzled the researchers, scholars and voyagers for a very long time. Then they came up with the idea of mapping the world with the help of grid lines. Let us now learn how they did it. Globe The globe is a small model of the earth. You will find that the globe stands on supports at the top and at the bottom. We can take the upper tip as the north pole and the bottom as the south pole. You can see only half the globe at a time. It can be turned around a line. This is the axis. Just as the globe, the earth rotates on its axis. Like the axis of the earth, the globe's axis is also tilted at an angle of 23 and half degree. Now that we have a model of the earth, let us see how we can locate the various places. Remember, the earth is not stationary and you are not standing in outer space to see and pinpoint the place. For this, we draw imaginary lines on the globe. Drawing these imaginary lines helps us to divide the surface of the earth into small portions for the ease of locating places on the globe. Lines of Longitude We take the North Pole and the South Pole as the standard reference points and draw equidistant lines from the North Pole to the South Pole all around the globe. These are called the lines of longitude or meridians. All the lines of longitude are of the same length. They meet at the poles and are farthest from each other at the equator. There are 360 lines of longitude. They help in determining time. The Prime Meridian the prime meridian is the standard line of longitude assumed to be crossing the Royal Observatory in Greenwich near London. It is marked zero degree. This longitude divides the world into two equal halves. The region 180 degree east of the prime meridian is called the Eastern Hemisphere and the region 180 degree west of the prime meridian is called the Western Hemisphere. Interestingly, the longitude 180 degree east and 180 degree west are the same. They form a single line called the International Date Line. Lines of Latitude We take the midpoint of the globe from the North Pole to the South Pole and draw a horizontal line around the globe at this point. This line divides the globe into two equal halves. This line is called the equator. The upper half of the equator is called the northern hemisphere and the lower half of the equator is called the southern hemisphere. Now we can draw parallel equidistant lines at a distance of 1 degree towards the north and south from the equator. These lines are called the lines of latitude. As they move towards the poles, they keep getting shorter and shorter. They would be 90 lines to the top of the equator and 90 lines to the bottom of the equator. Thus, there are 181 lines of latitude. In the northern hemisphere, the longitudes are labeled 10 degree north, 20 degree north and so on. While in the southern hemisphere, they are labeled 10 degree south, 
20 degree south and so on. The equator is marked as the zero degree, the latitude. It is the longest line of latitude. It is also called the Great Circle. The North Pole is represented as 90 degree north, while South Pole is represented as 90 degree south. Now that we have drawn the vertical and horizontal line, known as longitudes and latitudes, respectively, we have a network of intersecting lines. The points where these lines intersect each other provide us a location coordinate which help us in locating a place on the globe.